So after I dropped the unnecessary columns or the highly correlated columns, I will scale my data set. So I'm using mean max scaler for this task. You can use standard scaler as well. First I'm uh, instantiating the object and then I'm fitting I'm fitting using my reduced data, but I'm only using the sensor data. After my scalar has been fitted using the this data, I will transform that to X, which will be my the set of uh, input, and uh, the fault number will be my output, which will be Y. And I then I'm using a label encoder. I'm using label encoder to transform Y into Y encoded. All right, so let's see what is my X and so. So X is a uh, has 25,000 samples and uh, 38 uh, columns. Let's see what is Y. So Y has the just the corresponding fault label from 0 to 20. But uh, mind you, there are three values missing here. Three because we are not considering fault 3, 9 and 50. Fault 3, 9 and 50. So that's why I'm encoding that. And yeah, so in Y encoding, you see it's, you get 0 to 70 because uh, the three fault scenarios are missing. All right. Then I'm good doing training and test split. I'm taking 20% of my data for uh, testing and rest all for training. And in the next step, I'm creating all the instant of various machine learning algorithm, logistic regression, support vector classification, decision tree, random forest, naive bias classifier, key nearest neighbor classifier, and finally the XG post. I'm instantiating all the, all the classifiers, fitting all the classifiers and then predicting all the classifier on my test data and finally i'm plotting the confusion matrix for all the this is this is the just a function to plot the confusion matrix for different type of machine learning algorithm and after i plot that i got something like this so see this is the for the logistic regression uh, the confusion matrix is not very good because here we can see there are a lot of misclassification in confusion matrix the more number there is in the diagonal the better it is for us this is the actual values and the these are the predictive value finally the accuracy score i got 0 0.48 not very good for the svm i get uh, 63 still not very great for decision tree 77 that's much better for random forest 84 percent even better naive bias classifier well 64 percent knn i got like uh, 45 percent not very good at all for XGV confusion matrix, I got very high accuracy, this is 0.88%. So I decided to go ahead with XGB and I did hyperparameter tuning on the XGBoost algorithm. For that, I obtained K fold cross validation and grid search. And because it takes a lot of time, you can do it on your own. I'm not doing it live. So the maximum depth of the tree I take 357 and the N estimators I'm taking 100, 200, and 300. After that, I got the best performance is uh, maximum depth of 5 and uh, 200 trees. And using that, I got little 1% increase in the accuracy of the XGBoost. After that, I'm going to do the real-time fault prediction. So I'm creating this function, which will iterate through the, all the fault scenarios and it will plot uh, our prediction on the actual data so let's see here the hue the color color means how much percentage basically exibust will give prediction probability for each class each 17 classes and only i'm taking the maximum of those because that will be my uh, our prediction output anyway so i'm taking that at as my y proba and the hue suggests how much confidence the uh, model is with their decision so here for actual fault zero we can see the model is not very confident 
because you can see there is lot of uh, misdetection also there is lot of uh, false alarm and wherever it is saying zero it's not completely confident so here the red color signifies 0.9 that means very high confidence but it's not for actual fault one we can see most of the uh, prediction are highly confident and the cyan cyan line you can see here is the actual fault actual fault one and this is the prediction this is the prediction is also on the same clip and also because the fault was introduced after the 20th sample before that it was normal condition in normal condition also this this algorithm is able to detect uh, pretty well for actual fault two we can see okay most of the it's highly confident in its decision and it's giving good decision as well actual fault three it was not in our data set i'm just using it to predict and it, you can see that it mostly classified it as zero and just like that therefore different type of fault it gives pretty uh, satisfactory result but i think it can still improve on it because i'm only training five samples from the data set it may give this kind of result it might have given but if you take more training data it will give better result definitely so now what i am doing is i am plotting two different because i here here i saw the, uh, i previously said that we are neglecting fault number 3 9 and 15 3 uh, 3 9 and 15 and now i am going to show why i am neglecting those so for that i i am plotting the normal fault condition and different type of fault condition on top of it to see how much difference is it at least with human eye can we detect if there is a difference or not so for starting let's do for fault 0 and fault 3 yep the plotting is done you can see that there is barely any difference there is barely any difference among different type of fault so here faulty means the fault number three and fault free means the uh, without fault condition for the same simulation run so that we can compare properly here there is very minute difference here also there is very minute that is shift in the y direction but yeah it's pretty difficult to identify between these two type of fault classes even with the you know human supervision completely super superimposing one over another here also there is little bit shift you can see here also there is a little bit shift but it's very minute but if i check for any other type of fault let's say i do for fault number one i superimpose fault free condition with fault number one then yeah for fault number one we can clearly see that as soon as the fault is in, there is a huge deviation in multiple features you can see there is a huge deviation when the the fault one has been introduced now let's see the fault number nine yeah for fault number nine also you can see there is here there is some difference here there is some difference but most of the time yeah they're pretty much the same here there is some difference but most of the time they're pretty pretty similar so that's why i neglected fault three and nine and finally what i did i obtained the f1 score matrix i'm neglecting fault 3 9 and 15 because they are pretty similar to the fault free case and what i'm doing is i am just obtaining the f1 the i think the accuracy score for all different type of fault and then i'm taking the average of them so finally i get an average of 77 percent accuracy using xgboost so here in xgboost i'm only using training for five sample run from one to five so that may also be the effect if you take more sample run or more training data then you might get a higher accuracy that was it about this video and uh, all the codes will be available on github in the next video we'll try to use deep learning and try to do the same task so till then see you